This is Umar for Box Nation with the open workouts. Do you actually just want to give us the set in here? What's going on? Yeah, we are filming for the Mail Online. Um, and myself and Frank Warren are drawing portraits of each other, or painting portraits of each other. This is top tier content. Is there a fee for this? No. Surely you can't lose to a 72 year old man, no? Oh, that's a bit harsh, Uma. <laughs> What's wrong with being 72? It's very Nothing. ageist of you. Nothing, but surely you can outgo and go I mean, you, you could say that someone that is 72 has more experience in life, therefore would be able to draw a better portrait. True, mm. true. But uh, I'm not sure if both of you, any good painters, will find no, out on the mail online. I'm definitely not, yeah. Uh, Eddie, I've just spoke to Frank now, and he's actually categorically come out and said that Daniel did drop Anthony when they sparred many years ago. Did he? I mean, Anthony Fowler was there, apparently, and he didn't say that happened. Don't know if Frank Warren was there. I doubt it. But I reckon that if I was Daniel Dubois, I would have told Frank Warren that I dropped Anthony Joshua because it would have got him more money on his signing bonus. So, yeah, um, as far as I'm concerned, he definitely didn't. By the way, if he did, who cares? I mean, what was it, eight years ago? I think Daniel more. was 19. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Eight, eight years, years ago, yeah. yeah. And, you know, was anyone in camp? What were they doing? I don't know. But they're both huge punches. So, yeah, I'm sure AJ hurt Dubois in sparring before. I'm sure Dubois hurt AJ. I'm sure Dubois hurt... I don't know, whoever he sparred with, he's a, he's a big puncher. But, yeah, I mean, not, not the story that I've heard from everyone that was there, but it's a good story, nevertheless. Well, I think he got Daniel signed with Frank, so... Yeah, exactly. So, got him a few hundred grand. What did you hear about Daniel Dubois as a youngster? Because I know you were thinking about signing... Do you know what? Nothing at all, really, until I once had a call from Ambrose Mendy, and I was away at the time, on holiday, and he said, Daniel Dubois, who I, I knew was a GB young heavyweight, um, he's going to sign a deal with Frank Warren. And this is the deal. Do you want to match it? And I said, absolutely not. Because I'd never heard of him, really. And it was a lot of money at the time. And um, that was really the first that I heard of him. Then, obviously, he went on a run of knocking people out, you know, through that period of, of COVID as well. And then boxed Joe Joyce. And, and it kind of all unfolded for him that night. But he's come back remarkably well. Simon Jordan picked up on this as well. I think most people do agree in the Usyk fight, he looked for a way out, Daniel. In the Joe Joyce fight, you still would, like, adamant he quit, considering what was going on in his eye? He, he 100... You, you can't say he didn't quit, because whether it's right or wrong to quit, that's another question. If you, let, if you go on your knee from a jab, and the referee counts to 10 in front of you, and you do not get up, You've quit. Was he right to quit? Quite possibly. If the injury was as bad as it's been reported, maybe it was a great decision to quit. But he definitely quit, and he definitely quit in the Usyk fight. Do you think he's still got to quit in him, Daniel? Yeah, but maybe not like before. You know, he's done remarkably well to come back. You know, the Miller fight, the Hergovic fight. You need that kind of experience to show you can do it and go for it. And don't forget, when he boxed Joyce... And when he boxed Usyk, even, he's a very young man. He's still, what, 25, 26? He's 27 now, I think. Is he? Yeah. Still young for a heavyweight. Yeah, weight. I think 25 is a better story. But, um, you know, I think that... Yeah. I, well, when we talk about fighters quitting... Did Joshua th quit against Ruiz? No, because he got up about six times. And, yeah, he definitely walked back to the corner to, to gather a little bit more time. But the ref had his gum shield... And he turned around, he put his hands on the ropes, he looked at the ref. If he wanted to quit in that fight, he wouldn't have got up. He had four chances not to get up. He was concussed the whole time, he just kept getting up. Um, but when you let the referee count you out, and you're looking at the referee, that's when you don't fancy it anymore. I don't think the quit factor will necessarily come into this fight. <clears throat> I don't want to see it come into this fight. I just want a nice, clean knockout. But if it does come down to heart, will and then mind, AJ think, wins, one hundred percent. And you think the occasion is going to be too much for Daniel? Yeah, it will be too much for him. But I don't think that will necessarily affect his chances. I think he, it might affect his game plan. But Daniel's going to be dangerous, scared, intimidated, uh, you know, overawed with emotion. He's, he's going to be dangerous in there. Mm. 
He's actually adamant that he's going to make Joshua quit. This is it, yeah, no, but I don't, you know, he's got to say something. So... Do you think his mood will change as we get closer to fight night? I mean, you could, you know, in the first head-to-head, -head, he was breathing. You could see his chest going up and down because he's not... You, you're looking at Anthony Joshua. You're about to... You, he's not ready for what he's about to experience. But again, it doesn't mean he's going to fall over. It just means that he might not be able to compose himself for the plan in there. He, regardless of how he's feeling emotionally, he's going to be dangerous. Okay. Just the last one as well. Um, the IBF title not being on the line for Warrington and Kakachi. Frank's adamant that's the correct decision. It's the IBF ruling. I'm sure you've got a different viewpoint. Well, yeah. I mean, Fra I'm pretty sure Frank thinks it should be on the line. You know, unless... You know, I mean, I, gr I, I understand their ruling. But at the end of the day... You know, when you look at some fights that are taking place for the IBF titles, I just think there needs to be an element of common sense in these decisions. You know, you've got William Skull against Shishkin fighting for the IBF world title. You know, William Skull mandatory to Canelo. Canelo's got to vacate his title. You know, who has William Skull beat to become number one in that division? There's guys in that top 15 that Josh Warrington's on another level to. So, you know, but... I respect in a way that they follow the rules. I just feel like there's got to be a little, little bit of common sense. We were actually told we just needed to get a win. So we had plans to get a win. Then the IBF said, you have to do it at championship weight and it has to be over 10 rounds. And we said, nah. When did this news come in to you? Last, I mean, it's been going on for about a month, I would say. But the final decision, you saw a statement from them, I believe, this week. Okay, thank you, Eddie. Cheers. Cheers.